Welcome back to Abundant Culture Podcast, where we dissect the mindsets and tactics of the true beast of business. People like Gary V, Grant Cardone, and Warren Buffett, all to create a blueprint to experience life more abundantly. Hey guys, welcome back to your favorite podcast once again. This week we're talking all about purpose, what it is, what it isn't, where to find it, and so much more. And we got the pleasure of interviewing one of our good friends, Rotimi, who's not only a purpose coach, but he's also a brand strategist. He's founder of God Culture, and he even has an event coming up called Purpose Fest. So I'm so excited for you guys to hear what's in store for this podcast. So make sure you listen up. So Rotimi, thank you again for coming onto the podcast. Uh, I feel like this is going to be a really exciting one because you're really exciting and our initial call was amazing. So before we get into the meat and potatoes of the podcast and of purpose and everything like that, um, please tell us your story. How did you get into business? Yeah. So uh, my name is Rotimi um, and uh, for many years, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur, like right from when I was a kid. Uh, I remember that my mom used to, she actually told me that I always said it, um, that I'm going to be a businessman someday, right? I'm going to, I'm going to travel around the world. I'm going to do business, right? And it's always been on my heart to do that. In fact, my brother and I, what, when we were kids, we used to draw and then we used to make stickers and we used to sell them. <laughs> so we were hustling real hard as kids, right? Uh, you know, when our, our, our parents' friends would come over, they would see like all this artistic stuff that we were doing, uh, which wasn't very big then in Nigeria growing up. Everyone wanted, like every parent wanted you to be a doctor, or a lawyer, an engineer. Yeah. Um, Arts was like, eh, you know, it's like the rebels. Uh, <laughs> but at an early age, we were um, able to um, step into that, into a little bit of, of creativity and branding, even though we didn't know what it was then, right? Um, but that was that was the beginning uh, of being able to really get into learning about entrepreneurship. That I was able to create something that was fun and beautiful, and mm-hmm. someone else wanted it, that it was valuable. And if I was able to put a number to it, like, you know, like a dollar or a sign to it, then, and I, then I was able to make a sale. And that's, that in essence is the foundation of, of, um, of business is I create value and someone sees that need and they say, Hey, I want that. Then they pay me for it. And I give it to them, you yeah. know? Uh, and that, that, that was really my, the, the journey, I think in, ter- in terms of how it started when it comes to entrepreneurship for me. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. So, uh, would you say that um, that growing up, always knowing that you wanted to be an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. uh, did you find it hard to maybe get the support of different friends and family that were around you, or were they pretty open minded about it? Because I know entrepreneurship yeah. is something. It's very cool now but like you know a decade ago or even over a decade ago it was like what what do you do like you don't have a job why like what's wrong with you um like what was your experience with that well you know like i said when we were kids it was cute it was like oh you know my son likes to draw yeah. when we got to high school it was different um at that point you had to make up your mind what you wanted to be yeah mm-hmm. and so drawing at that time and my if you look at any of my notebooks i had I was just scribbling everywhere, drawing everywhere, right? And my parents hated that. Uh, I remember that uh, a group of friends and myself made a bunch of comic books and we used our school notebooks to make comic books. And you believe that. And when, when we were caught, you know, um, it, was, it was really bad. So we didn't get that support at, at early on. Um, but when I, when I came to the United States of America about 11 to 12 years back now, I remember that I, I, the first, I came in on a, on a Saturday night and I got a job on a Monday. The next Monday I was already working. Okay. <laughs> and I, re, I remember that it was the most miserable time of my life. Like that one year of, of working and doing database, whatever, it was just really bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I, I told my parents, I said, you know what, I, I'm really going to step into this thing full time. I really feel like um, you know, in America, I'm in America right now. <clears throat> I feel like there's the, 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 the resources and the stability uh, to be able to launch my company. And I'll never forget what, what my dad said. My dad said, go for it. 
right? Because my mom was a little concerned, you know, you know, you know, like any any parent would like, you know, uh, we want you to have a stable job. That's a, you know, there's that concept of you have the stability and to be able to get normal income. Uh, yeah. There's the risk involved in starting your own business, but I, you know, I went for it, and I can't imagine doing anything else. Every day when I wake up, I feel a sense of adventure. I feel so excited. I feel so much joy uh, to be able to do the things that I'm doing now. A network of professionals who work together to um, just make the world a better place using our creativity. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what? And then, um, oh, how about Purpose Fest? Yeah, Purpose Fest. So uh, Purpose Fest really started um, last year, early last year. Um, a, a friend of mine who was working with me um, said, you know what, I think I have a friend of mine who's really trying to figure out, how, out a purpose and she's really concerned about it. And, you know, and so I said, yeah, I'll talk to her. Like, no big deal. I had no curriculum. I had nothing. So she came over and we had that conversation about purpose and she left in my office. She was in tears. She was like, oh my gosh, I figured it out. I, I have a sense of direction. I know what to do. Thank you, Ratimi. She told a friend who then went and told another friend and then told another friend. And then, you know, I realized that I was onto something. Mm -hmm. And ultimately that became uh, purpose sessions, which was like, you know, like weekly classes. Um, we were actually going to do them on Mondays, right, alone. And then it got so good that we ha were able to do Mondays and Tuesdays uh, mm -hmm. nights. So can you imagine people coming after work, really tired, but like, you know what, I'm gonna drink an extra shot of coffee because I need to find my purpose, right? So that told me that there are so many people in corporate America all around the world who have amazing jobs, but <clears throat> don't feel a sense of fulfillment because they haven't found their purpose. And that opened the door to Purpose Fest, which is a one-day celebration of, of purposeful leadership and, and just transformational leadership. Awesome. So uh, what is some of the things that you would say um somebody would need to do in order to find their purpose yeah. because i mean i come from a background where it's all about you know the job the stable income and nobody thinks of this thing called purpose like ever you know and i was lucky because i was kind of like i feel like god kind of forced me into mine like i was kind of pushed into it but like i look at you know some of the people that you know i'm close to whether they be friends or family and you know they're just living but they're not really thriving it's kind of like they're just existing so what what would you say to somebody who is uh who hasn't found their purpose yet like what are some of the processes yeah. that you think they should actually go through well the first step is for me um that i'm also writing a book called your purpose is calling that's going to be out later on this year nice. uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> but the first step that I, I that I you know that I've written in the book is always start from the why. Um, always start from why. Like, is ask yourself why am I doing what I'm doing right now? Yeah. And you then what happens is that you begin to trace your journey, what I call your path. That's another P, right? Purpose, path, right? Mm -hmm. You begin to trace your path, and you and you look through your life, and you ask yourself, why am I here right now? And that helps you to begin to think through, like. What has brought me to the place that I'm, I'm, I'm at right now? And also, <clears throat> what is my path forward? And so if, if, you, if you are in a place right now where you're not happy, you're depressed, you're going to a job you hate, you got to ask yourself why you're there. And then if you trace back, you begin to see there's certain things. Maybe, maybe you believed what other people said about you. Maybe there's been things in your heart that you've always wanted to do that you neglected, right? Because, you know, <clears throat> you just want to make money right now. You just want to have a stable income. And so you neglected yourself, which is your true identity. Mm -hmm. And so I always say start from the why. But, you know, there are four Ps uh, plus. I have so many Ps. I'm going to give you guys four Ps, right? <laughs> if you want the rest of the Ps, you got to bet the book. Shameless yes. plus. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. The first P, as a person of faith, I believe that you need to pray because we come from a source and there are people who believe all kinds of things in terms of where we come from right but i believe that there's a mastermind that was a creative genius who put this world together i mean you just look at nature you look at the universe you look at the systems in the world the way everything works right the sun rises the sun sets the moon the stars all that cool stuff right yeah. there has to be a master designer so i believe that we have a source which is god that's what i personally believe right mm -hmm. 
the only way to know what a manufacturer has in mind for a product really is to ask the manufacturer, right? Why did you create me? So, and that's really my, that's my story. I asked God, I said, God, what did you create me for when I was in my second year of college? And I heard clearly, God culture, right? Build a global network of create, creative professionals who will take my love to the ends of the world. And that's what I'm doing full time uh, today, which is exciting. Um, the second P um, is really what I said before, uh, which is your path. But the main thing here is your past, mm. right? You got to think about your past. Think about when you were a kid. Think about the things that got your attention. Think, think about the gifts and the talents that you had when you were a kid. Do you know that in the innocence of childhood, a lot of times our purpose is so close to us, right? Yeah. yeah. When I was a kid, I was already drawing. Now today I'm doing storyboarding and I'm doing designs and illustration, right? And, and film and all that cool stuff. But as a kid, I was already walking in my purpose. But I just didn't know it. Yeah. You got to look through your past. Another thing that you need, to, which, which I call a purpose pointer, is pain. Think about the pain that you've had to go through. A lot of times you don't realize that that pain is meant to become a platform. I'm giving you so many P's. I think I've given you five P's already. All right? I appreciate it though. We appreciate it. <laughs> that, that pain becomes a platform. There are people like Christian Kane who went through sexual abuse and all kinds of crazy stuff. But mm -hmm. today that pain is now a platform that's enabling other women to get out of you know, the, the, the sex trafficking and, and abuse and all that crazy stuff. So don't disregard the pain you've had to endure because you might never know that's the platform that God wants to use you for. When, when you actually, because you just said so much, it's so much to actually really yeah. think about. But uh, when, when you actually do find your purpose, what do you feel like is important to do after you you find your purpose like cuz i feel like so many people whether they're artists or entrepreneurs or whatever the case may be like um like i i have a relative that can you know sing really well right. but i feel like the older he got the more you know the more he walked away from that gift of you know really you know singing like i haven't heard him sing in years but i mean he had a beautiful uh voice so what is what is something you should do after you figure out all right this is my purpose like what's the next step after that do you do right very good very i love that question so um when we started doing purpose sessions uh i realized now that there's always one person that ends up quitting their job <laughs> So oh, I put a disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, made it, I made it very clear that do not quit your job, okay? Because yeah. when you find purpose, there's a sense of, of fulfillment, of joy, of, you know, there's, there's this excitement that comes upon you, like, whoa, now I know what I should be doing, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's the temptation to immediately want to just quit the pain and quit the process and quit all that stuff and jump into the fullness of your purpose. Mm -hmm. But there's a process to two things. And so what I, what I, what I say in essence is that you should work yourself out of your job, which awesome. is a completely different mindset as to I'm quitting everything right now and jumping into this. But there are some people, I've, we've had a few people here who literally just dropped everything and said, I'm done being, you know, just slaving around on this nine to five and I'm going to step into the fullness of my purpose. So here's, here's three basic things that you can do. Um, one of them is to start with a plan. So remember, before purpose, you start with why. After purpose, you start with a plan. Everything needs to be done with a plan. So you need to have a short-term like short plan, a long-term plan mm -hmm. of how you're going to transition your life into walk, walking in your purpose. So you do that. Number two is you start a purpose fund. Okay, you start a purpose fund. What that means is that you start to put money aside into a high-yield um, savings account um, that, you can, that you can begin to use for your purpose. Because what that means also is that you now start putting resources together to be able to do your trademark, to be able to get your, you know, everything that you need. Yeah. To yeah. Launch into the third thing, which is slowly start building your platform. Do you know that your, your, your singing gift is not your purpose? Your oh, book wow, I didn't know that. It's not your purpose. Your talents and your gifts are not your purpose. In fact, those things are tools to be able to help you fulfill purpose. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I've so, never so thought about it like that. So, gift is actually separate yes. from purpose, but you use your gift yes. in order to fulfill your purpose. If That's I'm, correct. Okay. Yeah. That makes, <laughs> a, lot of, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Every gift and every talent, right? 
has been given to you uniquely to help you fulfill purpose. Hmm. That's, hmm, that's amazing. That, that's very interesting. Um, and the way that I'm like thinking about it right now, like my wheels are turning and I'm like, okay, I need to process this slowly. Um, but the way I'm thinking about it is like the purpose, the talent is like, you know, what you're good at, what it's kind of for you, but then your purpose is for other people and not just yourself. Yeah, I, th I feel like you ordered my book before I released it. <laughs> uh, every, every person has found purpose in, in life. Think of any great leader who's, who feels like they found their calling, um, that they're able to pursue their highest values. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you that it's always about the next person. Mm -hmm. There's no one who's been created just, as, just to serve themselves as the end goal. In fact, our lives... Uh, are better served when we serve it, when we serve our gifts to the world. Yeah. That is the essence of purpose. And so purpose is tied to leadership. Um, every every purpose, purposeful person is a leader because you are solving problems. Anyone who's solving problems, right? Mm -hmm. Who's figured out that I'm passionate about, and if, when we define purpose, actually I'll talk about what you're passionate about also. Because what you're passionate about is things that you're good at. You love to use your gifts in this area. You love to pursue, um, you know, deciding things, right? But at the end of the day, you're actually solving problems. A purposeful life is a life that's solving problems. Wow. So when you got into this, like, is it something that, like, you kind of just research yourself over time or did you have somebody you know teaching you about because I feel like this is really philosophical and a lot of entrepreneurs they they want to obviously they want to make money but they never really search yeah. for you know search inside themselves to see what they should use their gift for mm -hmm. and um, even myself is like over the course of my entrepreneurial career I found myself you know, finding more and more gifts. And the the hard part is not necessarily finding the gifts, it's finding out how to use this gift and making it uh, sort of meaningful. So like, is that similar to your journey? When you're talking about when you find, um, when you're talking about like the journey of finding purpose yeah. um, and what that really means for, for someone who's always just focused on like, like their gifts and their talents and just, just using that. Yeah. Um, so what it does is in simple terms, it's that I, I'll give you a formula and that is what I call um, the P, which is purpose and how that relates to vision. So when you find purpose, ultimately it opens your eyes to the future. What is the vision? What is your vision for your life? What do you see in your future, right? What kind of, how do you want to be remembered? And then we now start to pull other words like your legacy which is how you're going to be remembered, and V, your values. All right, so that, that formula, if you're able to put those things together, purpose, leadership, vision, values, is that everyone will ultimately live a life of their values, whether good or bad. You can start a business based on your values. That is, I want, to be, I want to have financial freedom. That's important to me. Your values are your highest priorities in life. So let's say some of your values are, <clears throat> you want to be able to spend quality time with your wife, you want to be able to travel the world. You want to have financial freedom. Those are your values. And that ultimately helps you to be able to put a focus on your future, the kind of future that you want to live. Mm -hmm. See how that feeds into your purpose. So <clears throat> if you're an entrepreneur, right, and you're listening to this or you're watching this, right, and you're like, man, I'm, I've just been doing this, you know, just to make money and just now it begins to change your perspective to, do I just want to be remembered for making money? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you're dead, right? Guess, yeah. what, guess what? You're not gonna, your spirit isn't going to drive that car. Your spirit isn't going to leave or float around in that beautiful house yeah. with a swimming pool, right? So yeah. you begin to see that true purpose is not about you. Mm -hmm. Wow. I love that. And we like constantly say that and talk about that and think about that like almost on a daily basis. Like uh, we used to get so caught up in like how many likes and how many views we get on the podcast or on YouTube or on our social media. And we would really just have to sit back and reflect and remember like, it's not about us. It's about that. Maybe yeah. it, we only got one view, but we helped somebody 
the one person that viewed it, that was who it was for. Yeah. And, there, and there's been times where like we've actually saw like the fruits of that. Mm-hmm. And I think every now and again, it's important for a somebody who's purpose driven to find, see the fruits of what they created. Even if it's like in the smallest amount, like we've had people that, you know, out of the blue, they contacted us off of maybe a few, they've been watching us for like a couple months or whatever the case may be. Maybe they saw a post that we made or, you know, a video and they contact us and they're like, you know, I want to work with you guys on something. And it's like, it's weird because this person like spent like weeks or months like getting to know you while you're out there trying to fulfill your purpose and you have no clue who they are. So it's like, you're almost like, uh, okay, what's your name again? Like, <laughs> it's, it's just so strange that it's, it's super important to like walk in your purpose while, you know, using your gifts as well. At the end of the day, which is one of the reasons why I love your podcast so much, that word abundance, um, it, it is a mentality, right? And that's what purpose does. It gives you it changes your perspective from me, what I'm going to get, how I'm, go- how, how I'm going to get it, and who I'm going to use to get it, to how am I going to live a better footprint in the world? How am I going to help my neighbor? How am I going to help the other person out there? How am I going to solve problems in the world? That changes and that influences your values in life. And so you're content. And that is, for me, the mentality of abundance. It's not about how much money you have. It's not about how many people know you. It's actually how many lives you've impacted with the things that God has given to you. Mm. That's amazing. So how would a person go about, I guess, starting a company or a business based off of what their purpose actually is? Mm. For me and Jasmine, that's, that was really important because um, we actually, we, we started our, our company at first to obviously make money. Mm. And then the more we learned our purpose, that's when we actually rebranded it because it wasn't always called abundant culture. And then once we found out what is the purpose of our company, which we actually, it took several months, almost, I think over a year and the help of somebody to figure it out. Once we found that purpose, mm-hmm. we're like, Oh, you know, that old name doesn't fit anymore. It has to be called abundant culture. And that's when we changed like logos and everything else. Wow. So how does somebody go about um, starting maybe a, a company or a non for profit using what they found to be their purpose? Very good. So one of the things that I always teach and it's also in my book is platform development. And there are very good books that you can read. Uh, there's a book called um, Tribes. I don't know if you've heard about that. It's, it's a oh, I do hear about it. I've, I I've heard of it. I had a chance too. to read it yet. Yeah. One of my mentors, I haven't met him yet, and I'm, I'm going to someday. But it's <laughs> uh, it, it, plat- Platform, the, the book called Platform by Michael Hyatt is a very good resource um, that I've learned so much from. And there are a few other good resources that you can read. But the first step is really learn everything you can learn about your industry do your research, study, right? A lot of times we want to jump right into it, but we don't realize that we need to take time to understand how it works before we step into it. But here's what you do. Very important. Here's what you do. It's another P. I'm giving you so many P's today. (laughs) That is you protect. You protect. You protect. You protect. I can't say that enough. When you have an idea, don't ever think that someone else in the world isn't thinking the same thing you're thinking. There are over 6 billion people, right? So you want to immediately protect your brand and so that involves some technical things like maybe hiring an attorney a a trademark attorney or just going online and finding someone that can do it affordably Mm -hmm. Um, but one of the things that I do is I go on the USPTO website and I check and I make sure that no one else has that idea which because you don't want to invest money into a platform and then after some time you realize that someone else owns that brand that is the worst thing you can do so you want to protect So that means for some people, you grab the domain names real quick. That doesn't mean launch the website. That doesn't mean start providing a service. It just means that you do the groundwork of getting all your your assets together before you launch. The second thing is you create what I call, some people call it a business plan, but I kind of like a vision plan. You know, a vision plan for me um, is a visual of the future that I'm going to. And so... It, it helps me articulate um, visually um, what I see. So what do I see for myself? So let's say, for example, that I found my purpose, and I have, as someone who's called to teach people about 
purpose, right? And help them unlock and their full potential by helping them become a purposeful and transformational leader. Let's say that's my purpose, okay, All right? Now, the next thing is how do I do that? Now, whoa, Rotimi can teach. Cool, that's my tool, that's my talent. Rotimi can draw, I can do graphic design, right? I have a design agency, right? My goodness, that's awesome. Now I'm beginning to understand that all that stuff, my work, is meant to feed my purpose, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So yeah. next thing for me now is to begin to, I get my domain name, I brand it, right? I protect it, everything is trademarked because you want to make sure that you have that. And all the while, I'm also putting money into my purpose fund. So that's where I'm pulling money from. I need a domain name, I need a hire designer, I need to do a, 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 a photo shoot, right, for my blog. Mm -hmm. That's where you're pulling money from, right? to be able to fund those things. And then when you're ready, right, after you've created your vision plan, which also feeds your vision board, and that's a, that's a whole chapter in my book where I talk about real, a true vision board, which isn't about your nice car and your fancy house and all that stuff. Yeah. All yeah. those things will come, right, when you begin to pursue purpose. All those cool things, all, all that stuff, yeah. it's part of the package, y'all. Right? So that, that's how I would, I would answer that, that you, you really want to be practical about what can you handle now? Don't rush into it. So if it's yeah. just getting your domain name right now, lock it down. If it's getting your trademark, lock that down. Just step by step, start building into when you're able to step fully into it. The final thing I'll say on that is have a purpose hour. So one of the things I teach is to, if you're working a nine to five, right? Close at five, don't go to, don't go to that happy hour. No <laughs> right <laughs> go home or go to go to stop go to go, go to a coffee shop right and do a purpose hour every day it is an hour where you read or you study or you do research or you make some calls but that time is for you and your purpose wow i like that a lot i'm gonna try to implement that <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so one question i do i just thought about is um what like, how does somebody know that something is their purpose? Like, if maybe, let's say they think they found their purpose, um, and maybe three to five years later, they're not really passionate about that same, like, subject, is that still their purpose, or does it switch? Or, like, you know, how, how do you think about that? Yeah, so um, your purpose doesn't change. Um, it's 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 almost static, right? I'm who I am. Your identity doesn't, well, some people change it, but ultimately, in my opinion, I feel like your identity doesn't change, right? Mm -hmm. It's who you are, it's who you're called to be and what you're called to do. Now, let's say that this, is, this little circle is the bubble of my purpose, of, my, of, of where I'm operating in my purpose right now. Mm -hmm. As you continue to invest in it, it continues to grow. And that's what we call influence. Your sphere of influence begins to grow. You begin to meet more people. Maybe you're teaching five people right now. Maybe you have five coaching clients right now. Maybe you have just five clients in your business right now. Mm -hmm. Then it begins to grow and it begins to expand, right? But here's what happens when you start something fresh. You will go through what I call the nine months of incubation, right? Where you might want to abort that baby. Mm. Because... <laughs> In infancy, that is when everything is so weak, right? Mm -hmm. It's a struggle to, to pursue purpose. It's a struggle to launch a business. It's a struggle to do anything that doesn't really give you the quick returns that you want. So what happens is people quit early. People quit early, right? So, so it's not so much that you're not passionate about it anymore, right? It, it, it might, in some cases, or in most cases that I've, re I've realized, it's that you've you face so much opposition that you're like, you know what? I don't know if this is working. I don't know if I'm getting the results that I want. So I'm just going to let it go. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're probably three months away from your breakthrough. I'll tell you this quick story. Um, I've been doing conferences every year. We've had, you know, a good number of people. We had 200 people. We've had 300 people. We've had 50 people. And I remember about two years ago, believe it or not, we rented this huge auditorium. We Paid for everything. And you guys know how expensive that is, right? Yeah. Only 22 people showed up. You said only two people showed up? 22. 22. 22. 22. Only 22 people showed up to a huge conference that we spent over $15,000 on, right? Yeah. And I almost gave up. I, I told myself, I said, this isn't working. This is pointless. 
Um, you know what happened this year? Uh, we got a call from K Love Air One National Radio, Christian Radio, and, and they told me they said we've been following you for a few years, and this year we want to partner with you. They were actually at our last event. Um, it was a, a Memorial Day. They, they came out, they brought their tent, they, they, they gave us a, a whole week of free publicity on the radio that we didn't pay for, for our event. And we're partnering with That's them impressive. this year. Now, if I had quit, right, and I said, you know what, I'm not, I'm not doing this no more. You know, <laughs> the Lord has moved on. I need to go, right? <laughs> if, I, if I'd done that, guess what? This wouldn't have happened. So mm. it's not so much that you've lost passion sometimes that you're giving up because it's hard. And yeah. guess what? You can ask all the ladies, right? Birthing is hard, right? It is hard. It is really hard. At times when I wanted to quit my business, right? But yesterday we just had a, a, full, a full-time um, videographer join us, right? Our team is growing and it's expanding. And I'm like, whoa, now we're operating at a different level. Our fees are different. Our office is different, right? Because when I was working alone at home and it was hard, right? I, mm -hmm. And I continued to push. Wow. That, that brings light to a lot of different things that we've even thought about um, in our business because mm -hmm. it's definitely hard sometimes, but it's good to know that, you know, there's always a breakthrough, you know, coming up soon. And, you know, you just got to, you just got to keep at it. You know? Yeah. Keep, keep writing those blogs. Keep, keep having those events. Five people, 10 people, just keep at it. Mm -hmm. And be, be excellent. Just keep taking good photos, great content. One day, guess what? It's going to blow up. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so um, kind of to switch the topic a tad bit. Um, so you have like multiple companies and organizations. Um, how do you like fit all of them kind of like within your purpose? Yeah. So yeah, we, we do a lot of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, th I think the best way to answer that is really just learning to let go. Mm -hmm. you know, and just learning to let go. And what, what that means is that being able to trust people and train people to take on things. And I'm always doing that. I've, I've been learning how to do that better because I, I, do, I do a few things, you know, events and stuff like that. But I'm learning to just constantly be, you know, hey, you wanna take this on? Hey, you wanna take on this new client? And, and, and that's helping. So we have, uh, we have a membership director at God Culture who helps to handle all our members because, you know, um, dealing with people and loving on people is hard work, right? That can take your whole day, right? So I have someone who's on staff who's handling that right now, just making sure people feel loved in our community. Um, I have, um, you know, a lead designer in our agency. We have um, someone who's do, who does development. And all these people are able to own their own thing. Right. And that kind of helps to take the stress off the things that I'm doing, all these things that I'm doing. Right. Uh, and there are also things that you need to like when I say let go, you need to cut the fat. Um, so there, there are certain things that you will see that are just time wasters. And there are also people um, in your network that are also time wasters. And you need to be strong sometimes about letting some clients go. Mm -hmm. um, because yeah because they just they just trouble right uh, and sometimes you gotta let some people go because some people just want to call you and be on the phone for three hours right uh, and just talk about all their issues right <laughs> so there's a wisdom in in learning how to cut the fat I was listening to a message the other day about how to do more with less you know and, and I was like whoa that's exactly what I need right now is I'm doing so much but are there are there, are there other ways I can rethink my work that I can do less and get more results, right? And so I think that that's the answer to that. Like, just look for ways that you can do a whole lot more by doing less. Yeah, for sure. I like that. Yeah. Do a lot with less. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, the last question that we have before we uh, get your contact information or whatever is, um, how do you spread abundance in your day-to-day -day life outside of the business that you have outside of the nonprofit? Like how do you spread abundance uh, throughout your life, whether it be friends, family, charities, like what is it that you like to do? Yeah. And, and uh, I think through um, our nonprofit organization, God culture, 
Um, one of the things that we that we do, we have four Gs. One of them is grow, which means to learn something new every month. Um, to govern, which is to be a leader, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the third thing is to give. And so we, we, we do that through giving our time, our talent, and our treasure. And so I, we personally, my wife and I, we, we give, you know, in church. We give when people have needs. We're, we're very supportive of people when they, and people do come to us and say, help me out. You know, I'm thinking, you know, stuff like that. So we love, we love to give in that way. Um, and also just as, as someone who people come to, the, you know, to talk with and the stuff like that, I, I'm always giving back in that way. I, you know, like I said, I think abundance is a mindset, is a mentality. It's not about how much money you have to give, but there's so many other ways that you can spread abundance um, in the world. Um, um, one of the things that I'm doing right now, I don't know if I told you, is I'm developing a business game. Uh, we're actually oh, gonna- yeah. You told us yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah very briefly. This video, let me show you um, some of the, the play cards. We've developed play cards for it. Um, it's really That's awesome. And this is also going to, to be something that I'm gonna use to empower entrepreneurs and coaches, right? To be able to go out into corporate America uh, as licensed um, coaches that can play this game, licensed facilitators that can play this game. And so guess what? Now I'm going to be doing a whole lot more with less, right? Because I can't go to every company and I can't be at every event, but I'm able to train other people through this really cool game, which is a really cool door opener. Like, hey, want to come play a game with your company? Just give me 20 people, right? Give me a Friday or Saturday, team building activity, and we're going to play a leadership game um, together. Now, well, these people are trained, they go out, they make money from it. Of course, I'm also making money, right? I get, right. <laughs> but Still a business. You know, uh, when I, last time I talked with both of you, we talked about uh, the power of passive income, right? Just mm -hmm. being able to do, um, like you guys own a, you know, a company, right? A coffee house, um, yes. something like that. Being able to um, you know, just have passive income just coming in, just coming in, right? And that enables you to be able to do other things and, like I said, do more with less. Yeah, for sure. I completely agree. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so for someone that is, um, they're trying to find their purpose or they don't even know what purpose is, they don't know where to start, they're clueless, <laughs> or maybe they, they need some branding or they want to play the game, you know, anything if they just want to talk to you how can they get in contact with you well uh they can call me you know uh they can email me um so you can go to my website it's uh rotimi that's r-o-t-i-m-i -I dot tv and um you'll be able to see a lot of what i'm doing some of my design work um also you you'd be able to see um, this flyer um about purpose fest mm -hmm. uh, i'll pay you guys for this plug um <laughs> <laughs> but Purpose Fest, we're having uh, that. That's coming up on uh, July 27. So you can come out there. We're actually going to play the game for real at this event. Tomorrow, uh, we'll do a trial run just to test it out, um, you know, with a few friends who are coming out to the office tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but you, yeah, you can totally go to my, my website, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm, I'm all there. But I think the starting point, we just go to retimi.tv and you see all the links to my social media accounts on there. And, uh, get my books as well and stuff like that awesome. awesome well thank you so much for coming on to the podcast this oh, was like cool. a wealth of knowledge <laughs> wow wow that means so much thank you so much guys i i, I love you guys you guys are lifelong friends for sure <laughs> thank yes, you yes we, we are <laughs> So that's all we have for today, folks. I hope you got as much value out of this as we did. Keep in mind, the only way we can improve is through constructive feedback. So remember to rate and review this episode. Also, you are not the only person that needs to know this super valuable information. So be sure to subscribe and share as well. Stay tuned for the next episode. And remember to always spread abundance. Peace.